Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Now, you know that I have something of a problem uh, with hand planes. I, I use them, I love them, I, I covet them. And uh, something I've been looking at in recent years is the new range of um, Stanleys. My brain went off on a complete tangent there. Uh, for the longest time, I said that you cannot do better than an old Stanley hand plane. They have got rosewood handles, and the steel is fantastic, and uh, they just work, and they cannot be improved. And uh, I love them. I do. I do love them. However, there has been somewhat of a, a renaissance among... Uh, woodworkers um, over the last decade I suppose and a lot of people now are using hand tools much more and as a result the tool making companies have improved their offering now Stanley uh, basically all of them after the Second World War the tools that they were making People didn't have much money to spend, and they wanted budget, and it became a pressed steel, imprecise bit of rubbish, really. And a lot of the tools that have come out in the last 30, 40 years were just not worth having. Um, however, <coughs> with Lee Nielsen and Veritas, uh, so this is a, a Lee Nielsen low angle plane. I've done a, a review of this actually, and it's an absolutely amazing tool, uh, and solid and heavy and very well made. Uh, so with with the advent of people being more interested in hand tools, some companies are making very very good quality hand tools, uh, like Crimson Guitars, our range of Luthiers tools, boutique level and all that. Um, so I went from saying you cannot beat an old record plane to saying, oh, do you know what? The steel isn't quite that good. And I've done a video putting this hock blade into uh, my number seven there. And uh, actually, the hock blade is an upgrade. I've got some Clifton steel, well, some Clifton blades that I'm going to put into other tools again on video to see how that's... Uh, uh, stacks up. Now the Clifton are forged, they're properly beat and forged and uh, wonderful. The Hock blades are cut out of just steel and Hock has been recorded as saying that if he had the money and the time he would prefer to forge his blades the way Clifton does. So possibly uh, the Clifton are better. Anyhow, so I've gone from uh, point blank saying you cannot beat an old tool to saying, you know what, you can upgrade an old tool. And now I'm thinking, you know, while I absolutely love the old tools and I will collect them until the day I die, and then my kids will inherit them and sell them because <laughs> they're all going to rebel and be accountants with no tattoos. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm now in the, at the point where I actually want to give an unbiased look at some of the new tools that are coming out. And uh, we have an unboxing. So let's see what this new uh, low angle block plane looks like after I put these beauties away. Now this, I really am rather excited about this. So Stanley, this was made 12th of Ars. That really says. Anyway, uh, 2014. And when you're buying a new tool, especially a premium one, the whole uh, experience is important. With with our um, range of tools, we send them out. Go away individually wrapped up in nice brown paper 
with a piece of red twine. Now, one of the things I love is they've re-brought out the Stanley Sweetheart brand. If you look at this beautiful old knuckle cap, um, it's got the Stanley Sweetheart there. And uh, those are, well, this is my personal favorite. That one or, or possibly, possibly this one. <laughs> Um, they're some of my favorite planes ever uh, by Stanley. Uh, anyhow, that's not what we're looking at right now. Let's put that right there and you can, the, we, they can judge, they can judge the new one while we're, uh, while we're about this. So it comes in a nice box and, uh, and looks good. This is a hand plane, and that has got that has got a thirteen millimeter thick instruction booklet <laughs> um, in about twenty different languages. Wow, all right, mouth adjustment taking care warranty, all of the above. So, and then it goes to that. So actually, this whole booklet, that half mil is probably all that we need. Um, so here we go. Let's have a look. That's obviously the, the warranty and all that. You might have noticed this is a Christmas present to myself. Now already this is feeling m much more substantial than uh, what I'm used to. And there we have it. Obviously it comes out of the box oily and greasy to be, that's to be expected. This is a this is a substantial substantial tool. Sorry for the squeaking in the background. We're uh, still a working workshop. So yeah, essentially the first thing you want to do is uh, the the finer the mouth, the uh, uh, the finer the cut. Really, essentially it allows the shaving to. Uh, uh, not break. <laughs> Sorry, can you tell I'm slightly distracted? Okay, so this is a... It's just very carefully. Essentially, I'm using my fingers very gently to see where the blade is. And it's just starting to poke out. So it's nice it hasn't shipped completely uh, <coughs> pushed out. Yep, so that's the mouth is going to close off absolutely as fine as we could possibly want. Now, essentially, with a fine mouth, it, it allows you to get a, a much smoother finish. Uh, that, I don't like how you can see in the center how that has been uh, uh, machined. It, it looks unfinished to me. Uh, and that's got the name on it, and that looks like that's actually stamped with ink. Stanley Sweetheart, number 60 and a half, 12139. That's stamped with ink, and it looks blurry and, and out of focus. That's a bit, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's slightly disappointing really. Uh, the casting is, is, is great, it's nice and big. Uh, and uh, obviously we've got some nice brass stuff as well. And I assume that it's perfectly flat. I'm going to pull the blade out again. 
Now, if you get a brand new plane and it isn't absolutely perfectly flat, then uh, you have an issue. Uh, looking for a standard straight edge, and I don't have one, so I'm going to use one of our notched straight edges quickly. Uh, I'm just going to hold this up to the light. Wow, I'm going to have to show you that. Let's move this camera. Say hi to Tom in the background there. He's uh, reaming something. Uh, we need the window to look at this. Um, I think I'm in focus. Uh, can you see that? Basically, now I've got the, the blade pulled back. The blade isn't touching anything. That's not protruding at all. Um, and we have a definite, this is not flat. This is nice and flat. That's, yeah, that's pretty perfect. But your sliding mouth isn't. And it's not just that they leveled it in there in one position. I've just moved it. I've just closed the mouth up a little bit. And there you go. Again, the plane at the front of the mouth there is still raised up. All right, I'm, I'm massively disappointed by that. There's, there's, a, there's a, well, there's a gap. And uh, let's, let's have a look. It's a rather substantial gap. The sides are flat, which is a good thing. Let's do that. That is 0.15 of a millimeter. And it's just getting under there. That is, that's, that's, that is a substantial issue. Um, now, if you take this all the way out, nicely greased and it's nicely milled and that looks nicely milled and clean I cannot understand although that there that hole seems to have been drilled after uh, the casting was milled let me this wasn't going to be a, a fettling video But uh, let's just see if that's done it. If it has, I'll be happy. Okay, let's close that down. Obviously, close it down properly. Ha! All right, that has now taken that gap from a 1.5. This is not perfectly flat. This is still going to have to have some work done. But it's taken it from a 0.15 of a mil. Let's, let's start on the optimistic side then. Oh, there we go. So we've essentially got our 0.05 of a mil is just about going under there. Now the problem is, where the biggest issue is, is at the mouth of the plane. It's the front of the mouth of the plane, which is where you want it to be the flattest. Otherwise it's going to chatter and the shavings aren't going to work perfectly. So, frankly, I wasn't expecting with a brand new plane, especially a plane that is this expensive, they're 80 or 90 pounds uh, at the moment, I was not expecting to have to do any work at all. And, uh, and I am. I don't even know how to unlock this. Oh, you silly, silly man. I've been playing around with too many different planes. These beauties, you lift that out and you've got access to everything. Look at how well used that is. 
Um, anyway, we'll push it back together again. This one, you have to loosen that and uh, essentially pull. Come on. You have to loosen it quite substantially before it will allow you. That's less ergonomic than, than one would hope as well. Go on. Yeah, there's a bit of finish there. So you've got a an indent here that really should be um, oval rather than circular. So that, I'm going to have to plane that those two corners away to allow me to take it over this. Um, now where you can't complain is they've got A2 steel um, and it even tells you to do it with a 25 degree angle. It's laser engraved on there. It's a pity they didn't bother laser engraving that horrible stamping there. That's out of focus and really not in keeping with a premium tool. This is depressing, really. Uh, however, that is pretty damn sharp. I'm obviously going to have to clean all the grease off um, here. Uh, it's also got uh, this beautiful uh, lateral adjuster. And this is based on... Uh, it's a Norris-style adjuster. And uh, if you know your planes, you will know that... Uh, you will know that you want a Norris, basically. And if you don't want a Norris, then you don't know planes. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of play. The um, I'm 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 nitpicking now. It's got this little brass collet there, and. I would like to see that perfectly fit, and it doesn't. It's got a bit of play in there. So, hold on, in you, there you go. It's got, oh, easily three quarters of a millimeter gap um, on the one side, and I'd like that to be a bit better. But in the end, it does what we want. It adjusts, it, um, well, it certainly does the job. Um, this feels like it's, yeah, that's, that's empty. This could be made out of something a bit more substantial. It's a, a molded piece of, um, you know, well, some light alloy. Um, now, again, that's, I could pull that out and make that easier, I suppose. But... Um, yeah, it's a pity that it doesn't just come absolutely perfect. So, I mean, in the end, uh, yeah, well, you can see the, t the, can you see the blade from there? Let's uh, push it through. Uh, there you go, well, there you go. Yeah, the adjuster is pretty positive. It does its job. And, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. And basically tighten that off, lock it up. It's a substantial plane. It's more substantial than the record one I've been using forever. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit... I'm feeling a little bit disappointed, really. Um, it's... You know, it, it fits in my hand. It's fairly chunky. Um, it's nice and heavy, which is going to lead to a positive uh, experience when I use it. But I think that I'm going to actually be picking one of these old ones up uh, much more readily, shall we say. Now, I'm going to file the corner off and the front edge, and I'm also going to um, flatten this properly so it's perfectly flat. I mean, the one part where this isn't perfectly flat is around the mouth. The issue that we've got is that was high. Obviously, I've 
repaired the, um, the burr on the inside of that hole over there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I've got a, a granite lapping stone here. We, tend, we use this for our tool making and you know, to find sand bits and pieces like these pickup rings that we're making. But um, it is also good for, well, perfect for flattening the, bot the sole of a plane. Now I've pulled the blade right back and I've lined up uh, the mouth um, <coughs> and that's all good. And this paper is perfectly flat. And here you can see it's not touching there at all and it's not touching that whole area. Now I'm actually going to go on yeah. I'm going to move the camera and go on some coarser grit. So you can see better. Hey. What's happening here? Now this is a very quick and dirty way of doing this job. You can use plate glass or you can use the engineer's method which is to actually um, use engineer's blue on the block and scrape away um, the metal. So look at that. I'm touching all the way along the sides which is actually a good thing but I also want to be touching around the mouth otherwise um, it's just not good enough and really the grit paper that I've got on here because this is the grit that they've been using already is a little bit too fine for this and we're getting there we are getting there um, now it's very important obviously you don't want your blade to be out because that would mess that up and if nothing else the, the steel that they've used on this blade is good. Um, you also don't want to remove the frog and all of that. Um, the act of pushing this down and locking it off puts tension in the plane body and as a result of that it will move a little bit. So if you re remove all of that and take the blade out entirely before you do this job then uh, there you, go, you can see that. Uh, then you won't have. Um, oh, basically, once you put the put the frog and everything back in, uh, the plane will move and you won't be straight anymore. So I'm doing this in real time. I'm not going to. I'm not going to edit. This is perfect along there, and it's touching all the way along the back. So this is this is going rather well. For a brand new plane, I wouldn't want to have to do this. I'm going to move over to some fresher paper there. Yeah, I really wouldn't want to have to do this really on a new plane. However, it is close enough that it is not taking very long. There you go. We're just there. I'm going to turn the camera off now because you don't want to watch this for too long. Uh, I reckon it's probably going to take me another couple of minutes to get it perfectly flat. And... Uh, now, the other thing that I'm going to do is just at a 45 degree angle or so, I just want to take that hard corner off. Because that annoys me and do the same on the front.
and it just makes the plane just a little bit more friendly to the wood. I'm going to go in with a file in a minute as well. All right, so back to the leveling. So here we are. Now, the really important thing is, well, this was pretty flat. There was a slight gap in the middle, which you can still see the sort of vestiges of there, actually. And that was fine. But in the end, um, it was low here after I'd removed everything, uh, after I'd removed the burr. And what you want at bare minimum is for it to be perfectly flat along the edges and around the mouth, not necessarily behind the mouth, not perfect, but in the front of the mouth, it has to be absolutely spot on. Otherwise, it doesn't push the grain down um, properly and it gives you a, a much worse finish. So I've now got that uh, done and I'm going to get, uh, this is uh, Crimson Guitars fret leveling file. Now this one is ever so slightly not perfectly flat and this is before we put truss rods in them. So it's now a general purpose tool and just file, you'd be amazed how useful a file in a handle like this is. I'm just, just taking that corner off and I'm going to do the front as well. Now, let's pull that out. Okay, I don't want any hard corners. So, huh. Crimson Guitars, fret crowning file. And a tool is a tool, whatever it was actually manufactured for. So there we go. Excuse me while I blow gently in your ear. Okay, so that is basically now as flat as I think it needs to be. In fact, probably flatter. I should have used a coarser grit, to be honest. This is going to be nice and smooth and, uh, and good. So the time has come to take the blade out, let's loosen that. And uh, I'm going to leave all the grease, I'm going to leave the grease in this area and just clean it away from, uh, from just inside the mouth. I don't really want grease getting on the, uh, on the wood. But I also don't want to leave that area unprotected if I can help it. Now this, however, is going to have to be cleaned off because I'm going to go and sharpen it. Now, straight off the bat, this is actually pretty sharp. It's just not, you know, that's nicely flattened. Um, it, it would do the job. It's just not... It's not to my level, so let's put that aside and I'm going to get some stones out. This is already very flat and nice. That front edge is actually shiny. Uh, so I'm going straight to my Kingstone and 
going for the final finish. Now, this is going to take a little bit. As you can see, I don't tend to use honing guides. I just feel better doing it by hand. So this is going to take me a couple of minutes. And then we'll see what this plane can actually do. Now with any new plane, you are going to need to do this. Um, unless you're going Lee Nielsen, I suppose. I think that theirs come perfect. All right, so the blade is now better sharpened. You want to get it in the center <laughs> My goodness. So it turns out that if you, come on, get in there. If you unscrew that to allow this to slide in perfectly easily, You don't have enough room, hmm. or am I just being a fool? Let's see. No, I'm being a fool, I think. Ah, there we go. Okay, fine. Uh, so let us align the blade. It's under tension. Now I'm doing this visually at the moment. Go on. Okay, I just lined the blade up and now using my fingers I'm going to advance it. If you go sideways you will cut yourself. If you're gentle and careful and go like this, you will not. Now what we want is the smallest mouth possible. Oh, there we go. That's a bit much. So I'm just going to... Let's close that mouth up. Okay. Now this is a bit of... Uh, slightly bird's eyed maple because a low angle block plane or a low angle plane is all about figured wood no. Now I'm just advancing this slowly. We're just about to cut. Now this piece of wood has been run through a thickness uh, sometime in the last six months or so. There we go. Wispy thin, not full width. But these are incredibly thin and beautiful shavings. And essentially, it's cutting a little bit too much on that side. I'm going to try and adjust it. I have. The Norris 
style adjuster is not oh, we've gone too far. No, 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 no. It's like reversing a car. Okay, that's okay. Now I've moved that. I'm removing the blade a little bit. The Norris style adjuster can be perfect. So, <laughs> I'm just enjoying this. Okay, well look, it's not giving me full, full width shavings at the moment, um, but it is giving me an absolute mirror surface and acting like a smoothing plane, I suppose. Yeah, that is, that is beautiful. So with some setup work, it's uh, pretty good. Now I'm going to just move the camera here quickly. Let's have a look and see what it does on some end grain. Now you can see that that end grain is uh, that's ruffle for a saw, just because I don't want to tear out. Just take that corner off. That is, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's actually taking shavings in the end grain. So, I'm not getting a perfect finish. There's a bit of a strange grain thing going on there. But, oh, there we go. Look at that. That is a micro-thin shaving. So, in end grain. <laughs> All right. Mmm, I could kiss it. Well, frankly, I think that for the money, this has actually ended up all right. I wasn't expecting to have to spend, you know, 15 minutes in the end flattening the sole. Um, I didn't have to spend too much time sharpening the blade. It's comfortable, it's weighty. <coughs> I, in the end, am rather happy. As for a comfort thing, it's, it's perfectly comfortable. It's, it's a lovely tool. Um, it's going to definitely work as well as it should. The, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Yeah, the edges are almost perfectly square, so you'll be able to use this in a shooting board as well. I think they have done a creditable job. This is massive, a massive improvement over their, um, the more recent showings from Stanley. I'm not even tempted even slightly to buy anything of theirs uh, made in the last 30 or 40 years, really. But uh, this is, it's nice. Um, yeah, these edges are beveled over a little bit for a bit more comfort. It's, uh, yeah, it's a lovely, it's a lovely tool. It's not as perfect as I would want, but then it isn't a 150 or 200 pound um, Veritas or Lee Nielsen. So I think it's um, aiming for the middle ground really and hitting it squarely. Uh, whether that's damning with faint praise or not, I'm not sure. Um, so, well, there we go. Uh, <coughs> if you're going to buy one of these, double check when you get it to see how straight and square it is. That hole that was for holding that pin in, that's the, uh, the adjuster, that was drilled after the milling and had 
there was a raised section in there. Uh, now if we look at this, let's have a look at the old sweetheart one. Uh, pull her out. Oh, there's some shavings from. Yeah, I mean this is. It's got less of a, a face on it. Um, so there's crap in there, but uh, yeah, this doesn't have uh, anything going all the way through. Anyway, it is what it is. I think I need to level this. This is a, a, a new, to me, tool at least. Uh, I would say, I would say, if you don't want a tool that requires any fettling at all, chances are, based on this one tool, this isn't the thing for you. Spend another hundred pounds or so on something even more expensive. And I'm not being paid by Lee Nielsen or Veritas or anybody like that. Uh, if you don't mind fettling a plane and have the capabilities to flatten the, the, um, the sole and uh, go in there and you know, mess about with uh, um, the sliding mouth, etc., then, frankly, I think that this could be made into an absolutely amazing tool, and uh, I'm going to use it well. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out all the other videos we do on how to build guitars and how to set up tools. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, videos on how to adjust and fettle planes. So uh, subscribe and check that out. Uh, thanks for watching. Have, have an awesome day. Goodbye.